help know the progressive movement in Burlington and Peter Cobell have led the fight against the regressive and unfair property tax and for a tax system which is based on people's ability to pay, not on the house in which you live. Young families know that it has been the progressive movement, along with Peter Clavel, which has led the fight for affordable child care in our city. Environmentalists know that the progressive movement and Peter Clavel have led the fight to solve the pollution problems of Lake Champlain, have planted thousands of trees throughout our city, have limited the heights of buildings, and have radically improved the management of our landfill. Women understand that the progressive movement has led the fight in the state for an ERA, for progressive job training programs, and for the establishment of a women's council within City Hall, which for the first time gave women the right to have their concerns addressed from within the government. Working people know, as exemplified by Peter's enthusiastic endorsement from the police union, the fire union, the AFSCME union, the building trades union, that the progressive movement will continue to lead the fight in our state for workers' rights, for a livable minimum wage, and for a national health care system that will guarantee all of our people the right to health care without out-of-pocket expenses. The peace movement and all of us who have been outraged by the Reagan and Bush administration's war against the people of Nicaragua know that it has been the progressive movement in Vermont and Burlington which has spoken out the loudest and demanded fundamental changes in our national priorities so that we stop wasting tens of billions of dollars on nuclear weapons and killing the people of Nicaragua as opposed to spending those tax dollars back home for housing, for education, for health care, for environmental protection programs. The people of our city know our record. It is not an accident that the city of Burlington, with the active help of people like Peter Clavel, has won national recognition for innovative programs in housing, economic development, youth and cultural activities. How many people remember today, for example, the pain and the struggle that we had to go through to establish a youth office, an arts council, an office of economic development, those long nights in fighting the Democrats and Republicans on the Board of Aldermen? How many people remember today that when we first stood up to the University of Vermont and the medical center, all of those people told us that we were doing the wrong thing, and we were attacked, and we were vilified. And yet today, overwhelmingly, people understand that neither the University of Vermont nor the Medical Center have been the kind of neighbor which they must become. Let me conclude by saying this. The issue in this campaign is not that the progressive movement is always right, and that we are all wonderful and virtuous, virtuous people and that the Democrats and Republicans are always wrong and that they're terrible people. That's certainly not the case. That's nonsense and that's not anything that we believe. The basic issue of this campaign is, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, is that every decision that we have made, and it's possible that some of them have been wrong decisions, we're not perfect, but that every decision that we have been, have been made, making has been made fighting for the best interests of working people, for poor people and for the elderly, and for the people who almost never get a fair shake from government. That has been our orientation. We have not worried about the developers liking us or not liking us. We have not worried whether the Board of Trustees at the hospital or the university like us or don't like us, whether the leaders of the legislature endorse our campaigns or not, what the publisher of the local newspaper thinks, or whether or not we get invited to join the Ethan Allen Club. We have tried to stand up and fight for the people and take on the powers that be as best as possible given the enormous restrictions that exist on local government in the state of Vermont. Whether that tradition and that effort continues in Burlington is really what this campaign is all about. And that is why it is so extremely important that Peter Clavel, an extremely decent human being, be elected the next mayor of the city of Burlington. And while I'm here, I also want to make it very clear that it is imperative that we continue to put on the board of older persons the best people that we can. People like Sharon Boucher from Ward 1, Terry Baricius from Ward 2, Tom Smith from Ward 3, and Chris Flurry, a very bright young man from Ward 4. Thank you.
Why do you think uh, Nancy Chaffee is not caught hold? I'll tell you why. Because deep down, they don't have the issues, they don't have the analysis, and they are clearly not prepared to stand up and fight for the vast majority of the people within our community. When you are running and you don't even know what your political point of view is, whether you're a liberal Democrat, whether you're a conservative Republican, when you have among your supporters people who are extremely right-wing and you've got to keep them as part of your movement, then what, in fact, do you stand for? Now, people can criticize us all over the place. We get criticized every day. There's been no government probably in the modern history of the state of Vermont that has been criticized more than the progressive government of the city of Burlington. But you know what? People know where we stand on the issue. And even if they don't agree with you 100% of the time, they'll say, at least we know where these people stand on the issues. We make no bones about it. We are on the side of those people who don't have the money, who don't have the power, and we're trying our best to fight for their interests. Nancy has been unable to be clear about that, because deep down, she's not really fighting for the vast majority of the people. Can you give an example of that? Uh, you know, what issue have you heard during this campaign where you saw her kind of um, not, not able, because of that split, able to give a con concise uh, viewpoint? Housing. Very simple issue. Housing, to my mind, a significant step forward for solving the housing problems of the state of Vermont and the city of Rome. I want to say to the developers, gentlemen, that's it. We are no longer going to accept you're building expensive housing all over this city and not building affordable housing. If you want to build any more in the city of Burlington, you're going to have to start building affordable housing or else you can build in South Burlington or Williston or any place else. That's all the concept of inclusionary zoning. It's a willingness to stand up to the developers. Nancy has been wrong on that issue. In terms of the relationship between local government and state government, everybody knows who knows anything about this issue that we don't, in the state of Vermont, give the cities and towns the freedom to develop alternatives to the, to the property tax. Nancy has not been clear on that issue. Those are two examples. Okay, well, on the, on the, on the tax thing, she has uh, supported the syntax thing and then yeah. not supported home rule, which seems to be something of a contradiction. Where's the contradiction on the housing thing? Where, where, do you think she really deep down wants to support inclusionary zoning, but no. I feel she can't because Well, I think she can't do it she because has. you can't go out and tell people that you really believe in the system. You know, you, you think everything is basically okay, that Sanders and Friends are too confrontational, and then at the same time have the courage to take on the major developers. We have, the progressive movement in Burlington, has stood up to every ruling class institution without exception. We think that they are not providing bail for the people of our community. Nancy has. But in fairness, I'm not here to, uh, really the purpose of this is not to attack Nancy. It's to talk about what it will mean if progressive government is gone from the city of Burlington. You think the progressive banner then pretty much is going to live on? Pardon me? You think the progressive banner pretty much is going to live on? Well, let me say this. Obviously, we have been pleased by the recent polls, which show that Peter is lead. I think if the election were held today, Peter would win. But I want to say this. I believe very strongly that unless our people, the young people, the working people, the elderly people, get out and vote in large numbers, if there is not a big turnout on election day, Nancy Chaffee is going to win this election. Okay. If there is a big turnout, Peter will win, and he may win by a very good vote. So it's incumbent upon all of those people who want to see progressive government keep going in Burlington to come out and vote on election day. Please do not take anything for granted. No one's going to vote for you. You've got to come out and vote. And if you do, progressive government will continue in Burlington. Bernie, how do you compare this to your race two years ago? Just in, in, t in terms of tone of the race, um, you know, last it seemed two years ago, the problem was getting uh, Paul Lafayette to even say anything. Remember you saying that you felt as though you were running against yourself. That's true. And in this campaign, there has been, I understand, there's something like 14 debates, and the debates have been very, very well attended. Because I think when you're an incumbent, people know your record, and I think when there is not an incumbent, people are, are trying to look at, at, at all of the candidates. Um, I think if you were to ask me, Mark, and I don't want to use this as an opportunity to attack Nancy, that's not why I'm here, but I would say that the most interesting aspect of this campaign is that Nancy has not really, I think, given the people of the city of Burlington a reason to turn their backs on progressive government. She has not been clear about providing a different vision. 
she has not been effective, in my view, of making a critique of progressive government which says that we have been moving in the wrong direction. And I think everything being equal, therefore, people will continue to go forward with progressive government. Well, that's precisely what you said two years ago. Well, it was true then. And uh, after, the, uh, after the election, I'll have more to say on that issue, but let's play it with you. You've endorsed the Progressive Party, I think, more than you've endorsed Peter today. Are, is Peter going to be a Bernie clone? That's the point. I mean, the point is one of the, the issues that Peter and I had to out, and the Progressive Movement had to work out, was the tone of this campaign. And what Peter understood from the very beginning, and what I understood, is that he would not win and he should not win if he cannot convince the people of the city of Burlington that he is his own person and a capable and strong leader. And that has been the tone of this campaign. Peter has been the one on the television. Peter has developed the programs that he's presenting to the people. What I am here today to do, not only enthusiastically endorse Peter, but to make the point that if Peter does not win, we will go back to the ways that the city used to be run, and we're going to lose all of the benefits that the government has brought the people. So it is part of a movement that has got to sustain itself and keep going forward. But having said that, let me repeat, as somebody who knows Peter Corvell quite well and has worked with Peter for the last seven years, that those people who know him well know him to be a man capable of truly hard work. Nobody I know who works harder than Peter Corvell, a man of decency. And uh, I think he's going to make it. How is he different than Bernie? Issue that's, that you guys it's, it's not an issue. Peter is different from me in many ways. Peter comes into this campaign, his, his first effort to be mayor, as somebody who has worked in local government not only for the last seven years in the city of Burlington, but comes forward as a town manager of a number of towns in the state of Vermont. Peter knows infinitely more about local government than I knew when I first ran for mayor. I think also my background was on the outside trying to take on the system from the outside. Peter's strength and background is working from the inside. So I think we approach problems in different ways. But I think the big thing, which is the need for local government to stand up and fight for ordinary income people, the people who don't have a lot of money, Peter is going to carry on, I think, in an excellent way, the tradition of the progressive movement of Rome. What kind of campaign do you think Sandy Barrett is running? You mentioned um, you usually were fighting from the outside. That seems to be the role she's taking. Uh, Mark, there is a lot that I'd like to say on that. Uh, I promise you a long interview the day after the election. It's one I have very strong feelings on. Bad. I'd rather not talk about it right now. I think it's better to say it's not a preview. I mean, you I mean, <laughs> what kind of campaign do you think she's running? The preview is that in the most progressive city in the United States of America, it is possible that Peter may lose as a result of the efforts of a group of people who have chosen not to be part of the progressive movement, but to operate in a sectarian, isolated manner. That's the, that, I, I really don't want to go into it much deeper than that. But that, that's it. You don't have to answer it if you don't want to. It seems to me that at the beginning of this campaign, people that Sandy was going to really hurt Clavel. And I've heard from a number of women that they're going to vote for Sandy and not vote for Nancy Chaffee because of the ERA issue. It's a, the truth is, you don't know, and I don't know. You're probably almost not even going to know until after the election how people vote and what the impact of Sandy's candidacy will be. I think, though, that it's fair to say that, you know, and, and one can't document this, but that most of the people uh, who, who are voting for Sandy otherwise would have voted for Peter. And in a close election, that could conceivably be the margin of by which we don't know. But, you know, you don't know. You may be right, but I would be pretty confident in saying that most of the votes would come from Peter and not from Nancy. Bernie, um, Nancy's tried to portray herself sort of as just a less confrontational but still liberal Democrat. And you said that this is really a question of whether progressive government, you know, fighting for the everyday man is going to go forward. Everyday and person. person is going to go forward. And what I wanted to ask you is what do you think, like, if, if Nancy were to be elected, what do you think is at stake here? Where do you think that the, the everyday average citizen of Burlington would this is what I think I think right now, most observers would agree that the city of Burlington is not only doing a good job for ordinary income people in our city, but is leading the statewide effort in a dozen different areas in terms of progressive government. Certainly, that quality of leadership will be gone. In, in terms of, of the fight for alternatives to the property tax, Peter and I feel very strongly on that issue. I think it's fair to say that Nancy does not feel very strongly on that issue. 
in terms of fighting and standing up and rallying people to challenge the absurd priorities that exist in the national government, where we're spending billions and billions of dollars on nuclear weaponry or giving tax breaks for the rich. It is fair to say that the city of Burlington, with many other people around the state, has led that effort. Clearly, that's not going to happen if Nancy Chaffee is elected. In innovative old programs, in, ter in housing, in child care, we have led the state. Clearly, that will not happen if Nancy is elected, in my view. But, you know, I mean, do you expect Peter Clavel to be as forceful as you are? That's an unfair question, Mark. I mean, what I'm, you know, Peter is Peter and I am I. You know, and there are strong qualities that we both have, and we're different human beings. But what I'm here to say, unequivocally, that in my view, Peter Clavel is going to be an excellent mayor for the city of Rome if he's elected. And that's about all that I can say. And you can ask me that question two years from now if he's elected, then we can analyze it. But it's, it's unfair for me to project when he hasn't taken off his head. But in the context of relations, Nancy, so then do you feel sort of a bit like, for example, there would be less affordable housing oh, available under the Chelsea? Absolutely. No, just what's the Navy's about that. Yes. I mean, have not been found to secure. You know how difficult it is getting hold back grants on the Ronald Reagan to build affordable housing, Peter Collins has been sitting with us for us, to negotiate, to help put together that senior citizen housing project near the Heinenberg Club without one penny of federal grants. Amy Wright and the people in Peter's office did a fantastic job. Really, it is just very difficult to do. Uh, we have brought together people who are committed to the struggle for economic justice. I see no reason to believe that Nancy would do that. Well, what about the development? Do you feel that uh, uh, the Chiaffi administration would be more yeah. We'd see more development in you would see, yes, I do. I, and I think, you know, our position, and again, this is not very clear because we have to deal with the Democrats and the Republicans on the board of all of them. Our position has been very clear that we want to see development work for the interest of the ordinary people, not just development for the sake of development. We haven't had the votes to get that passed on the board of all of them. I would say that it's, it, it's fair to say that Nancy's position is different. Isn't it a bit of an overstatement to say that you really expect that, that uh, the Democrats would dismantle everything the progressives have done? Well, yes, it is. If I, I don't think that they would dismantle everything that the progressives have done, that is not the case. But I think the thrust and the energy that we have developed in terms of fighting working people and poor people, that direction would be changed. No, please do not understand me as saying that I expect that if Nancy wins, Every you know office that we have put together will be disbanded. I don't think that that's the case, and I, I didn't mean to say that. If I did. Would this be something that would be more of a difference uh, in, in tone around the city, or 